wanted to address uh, the question regarding God's will and God allowing evil to happen. First of all, I do want to say this, and this might sound strict, might sound harsh, but for someone to ask if God is so good, why would he allow evil? That person's heart is completely in the wrong place. That is a wicked question because what is happening here is that you are saying that the very standard of morality does not match yours, therefore I question it, okay? If I have a standard of morality that is not like God, then I am the one that's in question, not God, okay? So to even ask, why would God allow this? Or why would God allow that? That place is coming from a wicked heart. That, that's where that question is coming from. So we actually have to check our own heart when we question certain things like that. And if you believe that you are in a place to where you can actually question the morality of God, then that is a dangerous place to be. That is a very, very dangerous place to be. But for the sake of it, let's talk about that. Why would God allow evil to exist? Well, to that, I would ask this question. Why would God allow love to exist? You see, we kind of question God's morality when bad things happen. But we don't question when good things happen. You see, if there is no bad things that possibly can happen, then what good things can happen? We often ask God to intervene. If something bad is going to happen, we even have many prosperity gospels that surround it. And we believe that God is here to just push off all of the bad stuff and make sure that none of the bad stuff can ever happen to us. Good stuff, we don't want God. We don't want him around. We don't want him to stop our sins whenever our sins feel good. But then if there are consequences to those sins, well, we want the judgments to go away. We'll even call on God during those times. When it's time for judgment, we say, let's pray. Well, how come we didn't pray before we made decisions that led to judgment? You see, if we're going to smoke all of our life, and then cancer comes, well, now we want to pray to God. And then if nothing happens, like if the person dies, we say, well, God allowed them to get cancer. Well, in a way, yes, God did allow you to get cancer because he laid before you the good path and the bad path, and then you chose the bad path. And if you choose the bad path, why is it that it's God's fault now that consequences come with that. See, if you chose the good path and you chose health and you chose strength and you chose wellness and you chose all of these different things and you took care of yourself and you avoided all of the sin of the smoking and the, the sex life and all of these things, you avoided all of that. And now the consequences are good. You are prospering. You're doing very well. Now all of a sudden it's like, yay me. And then on the bad side, it's like, God, why would you let this happen? Well, you see, God has to allow it to happen because God is a God of love. And love, by definition, has to allow bad and good. Because if he doesn't, then it's not your choice. How is it your choice if there is no evil that could possibly happen? You see... I can do things for you. I can get you all types of money and I can get you all types of cars and, and all types of prosperity, but I cannot force you to love me. No matter what I do, I cannot force you to love me. Why? Because you have to choose to love me. Doesn't matter what I do, no. There still has to be a choice. You have to choose to respond back to my love. And if I take that away from you, and I say, no matter what, you are going to love me, and you have no choice, that's not love. I have to allow you to choose to go the other way. Otherwise, 
It's not love. It's not a choice. So when you think of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and all of that, what does that have to do with? It has to do with choice. When you think about Jesus dying on the cross, this is God breaking through time and space to give us the power to say no to all of the things that separate us from him. And if you choose to love him, then of course you will refuse all of that negative stuff. That's what all of this is about. When you talk about a woman who gives her body or a man who gives his body before marriage, when you talk about fornication, this is a person who is choosing not to love. When you talk about a person who is doing all of these types of drugs, yes, you may be addicted, but you are choosing not to love. Because at the end of the day, God has to judge you for your choices. He's not judging you because he's good or he's bad. When you talk about God is allowing this death to happen in the Old Testament, look about Sodom and Gomorrah and all these things that God just allowed to happen to them. It was their choice. So let's try and take things off God that don't belong on him. Okay, if God has to judge you, he's not judging you because he is a child with some magnifying glass up trying to burn ants. We, as mortal beings, all have a choice. So the question is, what choice do you make? And the choices that you make, God will allow those consequences because he loves you that much that he will allow you to even choose to not be with him. Hell, outer darkness, bottomless pit, all of that is a choice to not be with him. And if you love someone, then you have to allow them to choose to be with someone else. If they want to be with someone else, if they want to be with Satan, if they want to be with Molech, if they want to be with Asherah, if they want to be with Baal, if they want to be there, a loving God is going to say, even though all of it comes with this negativity and this everlasting torment, I have to allow you to choose that path. Because if I don't, I'm not God. So think about that. When you say, how can God allow such things? I'm telling you that God is allowing such things because he's love. Think about it.